exposure to the work of you guys was through playing Tearaway Unfolded, which was a, a collaborative uh, effort with Media Molecules to translate Tearaway from the PlayStation Vita to the PS4. How did that collaboration come about? Um, so we started off, uh, it was actually a long time before that, uh, working with Sony. Uh, we started off with the uh, Ragdoll Kung Fu for PlayStation 3, like a mm -hmm. spiritual successor to the, the first external third-party Steam game, I think, uh, called Ragdoll Kung Fu. And that was a venture collaboration with Sony, but also Mark Keeley, one of the founders of Media Molecule, but also one of the creators of Ragdoll Kung Fu. And that kind of started the collaboration with Media Molecule and also Sony. And then we went into Little Big Planet and helped Media Molecule with that, uh, doing content and then later on like more uh, levels and then finally our own Little Big Planet game, the, the Little Big Planet for PlayStation Vita. And that kind of, uh, well, we had this really nice kind of collaboration between Sony, Media Molecule and us. Uh, uh, so that's how it kind of came about that we were there. Uh, we had nice a nice collaboration. Uh, I, I think they felt that we understood the kind of games that they were doing. Um, and and they were like, yeah, we're gonna make this uh, sequel to to PlayStation 4. Do you wanna do you wanna help out? Uh, so we did. And it, that was, I mean, the, the different kind of collaborations we've done with Media Molecule has been from all from us doing a game that is based on something that they've done to almost like strict outsourcing kind of, like we just making art to this kind of collaboration, which is the, I think the most tricky one where you actually have two teams working together, like one team at Media Molecule, one team at Tasia working together on, 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 on a game. Um, but yeah, it, it, a long, long road to that collaboration. So when it comes to working on, on a project that way, where, where it is, like you say, the two separate teams, what's the, what's the work balance for that in, in terms of, you know, the studio and creatives? Who, who has the most say in, in how you bring the new version to, to bear? I, I, in that specific case, uh, they had the creative uh, ownership mm -hmm. uh, of the project. So uh they were the final decision maker on the quality and what is gonna uh, get into the game uh but it was still a really nice collaboration where they encouraged us to be creative and find new mechanics or find new uh cool stuff to add to the game um and it was nice it was like eight or ten people at our end um, maybe a bit bigger team at their end but not that much uh, more uh, very, uh, very collaborative, and you need that obviously when you're making this kind of collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and it became a really cool game. Is there is there ever any sense of pressure when you're playing with another studio's toys? Like, if, if say, like with you know Sackboy and Little Big Planet as an IP, does it? Do you sort of feel like you have to handle it with kid gloves a little bit? Of course. I mean, you need to uh, both respect. Uh, the creators respect the IP, respect the, the previous games. Um, not just respect, but you need to understand them, uh, mm -hmm. where the essence come, come from. Uh, but then you also want to add something new, right? You want to add something from us, from Tasia. Uh, so it's, it, it is a tricky balance between, you know, we, we want to go haywire, but uh, we can't really, but we can put, maybe pull something off. Um, you can def you can definitely see that in Little Big Planet uh, for the Vita, uh, where you it's a Little Big Planet game. You have all the kind of things from the old games. You have the charm, but you can see the darkness uh, and twistness from Tasia in, in that game. Uh, around the time of uh, especially Little Big Planet Two as well, there was an awful lot of Sackboy merch out there in the world, and this is completely this this isn't in our questionnaire. I'm just curious. <laughs> Free stuff tends to get given out within the production houses and offices and everything. Did you get any really obscure Little Big Planet swag at any point? And if so, what's your favorite bit of merch? <clears throat> so there's, of course, a lot of Little Big Planet stuff that we've uh, got sent to us over the years. Um, favorite. 
That's tricky. Um, I know that we got some, uh, like, uh, I think it was like a Japanese, like, book about Little Big Planet that was very uh, strange. Um, but I, yeah, I haven't seen that for 10 years, so I'm not sure. <laughs> so it's in the, it's in the office somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's in the office somewhere. It's like but it, it's uh, it, it's nice because because it's been a couple of different studios working within that franchise and it's always you know when we're about to release little big plant game we send some nice like um, uh, merch to one another and uh, some really nice like a big painting that we have uh, at the office that is you know a symbol of the collaboration between some of us some of our studios See that's sweet because that's that's a like you say it's a it's a gesture of of, of the time and the effort put into the project, yeah. Um, yeah. alongside like you know a giant sack boy plushie that was probably also just like <laughs> I can have one of these as well. It's a beanbag yeah, yeah, with we, his face on. <laughs> we had that one until it fell fell apart. <laughs> if you sewed it back together, that'd just be on brand. It's this his look. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. True. <laughs> So uh, with, with games like uh, the Stretchers on Nintendo Switch, you, you guys toyed a lot with physics and space. How much work goes into figuring out logistics for such a game? So any any physics-driven game is, and this is, um, it, it, it's all in how much you embrace physics. Um, if you look back on Ragnarok Kung Fu, for example, if you've ever played that one, it, it is extremely physical game. Uh, we, ha I think we had like thirteen um, rigid bodies connected with joints and everything uh, to simulate these kind of very physical characters, um, and it affects gameplay. Obviously, that ki that kind of physics, and that's like a nightmare to to make because you you at one part you want physics that affect gameplay. But on the other end, you have rules and mechanics where you need to control physics. And that's always like controlling physics is, is, is a hassle. Um, uh, so, and I think most of the games, so we've played uh, around a lot with physics, but most of our games are at the same time driven by um, mechanics and game rules. So we've always ended up in this tricky, situation of balancing physics, mm -hmm. controlling physics, make sure that it uh, plays well with the game rules that we're trying to create. Uh, and, and that's quite tricky. It's, it's completely different from like, at least I, at least from my point of view, uh, different from embracing physics fully, where every, anything can happen and it can, you know, just explode or whatever, yeah. um, which can be super fun. Uh, but then you need to have maybe a bit simpler uh, gameplay rules or uh, design uh, so you can actually fully embrace it. Or you go the completely other direction, of course, where physics is just cosmetics and yeah. uh, not affecting gameplay. Uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, it takes a lot of time, that balance between control, but also want some physical feel to it. Thank you for delving into that, by the way, because I, I think it's uh, just sort of as someone playing a game casually may not appreciate the amount of work that goes into just figuring out logistics like that. It's not just <laughs> as simple as as going like, right, so we'll press a thing and the person moves forward. It's like there's so much more involved in how we get to that point. <laughs> it is. Now, you found great acclaim with your most recent duology, Little Nightmares and Little Nightmares 2, which features some of the most pleasantly... I think I can say this, disturbing character designs in modern gaming. Uh, was the genesis of the first game born from actual nightmares or are you all just super twisted over there? Um, I, th I think it's a combination, to be honest. I mean, uh, we are, um, I would say, um, we have some people here that are quite uh, in that space of darkness. Uh, and it's, uh, I mean, the characters in, in both the games, Little Nightmares games, you can definitely see that this is uh, com completely fucked up. Um, but that's also what uh, what I really like about it. It's, it's, uh, 
uh, trying to uh, characterize uh, you know evil or or evil behavior in in a physical shape and uh, and this kind of surrealism that that is blended into it where you can you can see it is a character you can see that it's but it's different uh, and and kind of yeah like like nightmare uh, how you would depict something when you're dreaming nightmares uh, extorted and uh, uh, twisted and, and exaggerated and yeah there's definitely the distorted reality aspect is, is definitely yeah. um prominent in in those designs and what what scares me the most about a lot of the you know a lot, a lot of the, the the creatures in those games is is you can see the human you can see the humanity there is a basis with every single one of them of oh someone like that freaked me out when i was a toddler or oh i have a memory of someone who kind of obviously not literally looked like that but it, it's it, the the mirror to reality while not maybe immediately obvious is terrifying so thanks for that no. um <laughs> uh, uh, do, do you have a particular favorite character design across the two games from the second game it's the teacher uh and mm. i think it's kind of related to what you just said that it's kind of related to reality and maybe your own experience from childhood. I don't know, but the teacher is very real in our world. And here's mm. this kind of depiction of a teacher that is <laughs> really creepy. And, and I mean, not, not too long ago, uh, at least in Sweden, um, teachers spank kids. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of rooted in, in what has happen in in real world but it's obviously distorted and and made a, a bit more horror-y um but yeah i i, I like the teacher uh, and her neck and then uh from the first game it's definitely the chefs um it's yeah. uh they're really creepy something that uh, little nightmares exemplifies uh, that your studio is brilliant that you achieve brilliantly is tone uh, do you set out to make players feel a certain way at the beginning of a project, or does that result kind of evolve during the development? No, it's it's super important uh, I, from day one to talk about what what is the feeling that we want to push here, uh, or at at the very least make sure that there is some feeling in there. Um, and tone is is a huge part of that. Uh, it goes from like the art. The characters to narrative to how you uh, tell a story to mechanics and it all have has to fit together uh, so it's extremely important to us to kind of know from start this is what uh, what feelings that we want to push uh, or hope to push for the player um, and that kind of tells us what kind of mechanics we can or cannot have what kind of characters we can or cannot have and um, the, the visual language in the game and um, yeah it's it's core it's a fundamental part of of uh, making games at, at, at Tassier at least mission statement day one we want this <laughs> we want them to feel this <laughs> and, and little nightmares 2 um, has definitely you know it, it makes people feel a certain way to the point where it's become it's become a hugely popular uh, streamer game this year. Uh, mm. Do you ever, and you, you, you don't have to give names, but do you ever sneakily tune in <laughs> to sort of see real time how, how your work has, has affected people? Of course, a lot. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and I think I speak for most people here. Um, it's uh, a mixed feeling of being curious, of course, uh, especially reactions on the kind of key beats in the game. Uh, but it's a mix of that and, you know, uh, see when, uh, you know, there's a bug or they play in a different way than we thought they would uh, or find, uh, find something, well, find a critical bug that's always like really, uh, yeah, uh, not, not that nice, uh, nice of a feeling. Uh, but yeah, so it's it's a mixed feeling of of uh, of yes, I want to see the reaction when they uh, when the meet at the end of the the first 
part of Little Nightmares 2 when you use the shotgun, for example. It's a uh, uh, strong reactions, and it uh, yeah, it's it's really cool to see. Um, I suppose it's it's additional play testing in a way, then, isn't it? It's it's you, you've 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 put it out there, but you know, just in case, like, oh, that's a good point. Put that in the patch. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they like that. Yes. We'll keep that. We'll keep that for a, like any future version. We'll do this with it. We'll do that. We'll put that to one side. That's not. It's not bad. And I, I bet it gets really annoying if you're watching, waiting for a key narrative moment, and a subscription alert comes up on their stream and completely spoil. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they pause and walk away, or they they just start talking about something else. Uh, yeah, I, I know that at release date of Little Nightmares Two, it was like we were watching different streams um, and just seeing all these small bits and pieces. Where okay, we could have done this better. We need to fix this. So it was all this shatter in, in on Slack. Uh, where okay, we need to fix this. We need to fix this. Uh, we have time to fix this, uh, and uh, yeah, it's um, it, it is definitely a mixed feeling uh, when you see your kind of darling. Um, you're you're, you're putting but, yeah. your you're putting your baby out there for the world to judge, and it's yeah. It, but when it hits, it absolutely hits. D does anybody uh, at the, the, the offices keep a personal scoreboard for moments that are just like, I came up with that and look at the reaction. Look at the screams. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so. Uh, Everyone's modest. I, 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 I mean, yeah, very Swedish in that way. Um, but yeah, sh sharing a key kind of recordings of people playing, that's, uh, that, that definitely happens. But... Uh, not the kind of I, I made this. Uh, <laughs> the, no, we're we're typical Swedes in that sense. So the moment there's a complete success in the delivery and the reaction, everyone just turns to everyone else and goes, "Well done, well done, well done." Yeah, well yeah, done. yeah. High fives all that. I'll get I'll get the donuts in. We'll have a celebration. It'll be great. It's it's fine. We did we did this. I admire that. It's great. Like don't no one no one snatch the moment. It's a team effort. Uh, and and speaking of speaking of the team at, at Tazia, so. As we're moving into a new generation of, of hardware and engines, uh, what are your team looking to achieve next? What, what sort of goals have you set yourselves for the future of gaming? Um, I mean, we're, we're working on new titles now, and uh, it's still early days, but uh, some really cool stuff <laughs> without saying <laughs> anything. Um, the way we think about, I mean, I'm, I'm a tech guy. I, I, I'm a programmer. Um, Historically, I don't do that much coding anymore, but uh, I love technology and the, the new things um, on on uh, on the new generation of consoles, uh, rendering, memory, CPU, everything uh, up to like input devices like the um, the new uh, gamepad on PS5. Mm -hmm. There's so much cool stuff. Um, but then at the end of the day, for us, I mean, that helps us, uh, obviously. Um, but we're so focused on making a really strong, cool experience that these kind of new technologies, et cetera, it, 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 it is discussion point for us, definitely. But it's, it, it's not the driving point uh, for us. Uh, it will enable us to do some more cool stuff, you know, push in some more uh, um, fidelity in our games or um, new post effects, whatnot. Um, but uh, we're, we're still about, like you said before, tone, uh, trying to push a feeling, trying to make something that is very memorable and strong. Um, I, and I think you, you can do that on, on, on a Game Boy and you can do that on PS5. Well, whatever's up next is in safe hands and I for one can't wait to check it out. Andreas, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me.